In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. There is always a, a sound, a voice that wants to speak to us, wants to communicate in and through, through everything, nature, creation. All that, that is beautiful, it has its voice. speaks of the beauty of the creator who is absolute beauty. To recognize that beauty, we must. We must turn away from everything that is ugly in us, that is not pure and good. We must renounce everything now this morning that is alien to what is the most beautiful. If we are truly to appreciate life Appreciate the one who created life, our creator. If we are to truly hear his voice of beauty and appropriate that beauty into our own hearts and minds and lives, that we may be, be, be transformed by beauty. So we need to stop now before this truth. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Let us not harden our hearts. It's very hard to listen when you are only listening to yourself and we are self-absorbed, self-controlling, in charge of every voice that we, we are afraid to, to trust in anything, only ourselves. And so we find ourselves responsible as if we are God. And we carry in the result of all of this is, is fear. Anxiety. Anxiety with which we carry inside us, so we, it prevents us from Having the, that freedom to 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 be open, we are torn between ourselves and our Creator. We are tied down to the world and its attractions, and we have got lost 
in ourselves, lost in the world, in our pleasures. And sin that weighs us down to the world. So we must leave all these worries aside. We have to be courageous to renounce. For this next 40 minutes. If we carry the world with us, we will. We will never leave the world. Will never transcend. We will continue to feel guilty and burdened and worried and under pressure. We are always at the threshold of of true life. So we need to become unburdened not bothered by anything. We need to to be able to take off all of this weight, this pressure that we put our lives under, our our, our being under. If we are to really encounter the Lord, to encounter our baptism, the Father and the Son and the Spirit. This encounter between you and and Jesus, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are burdened. So we must do that again. Have nowhere else to to go. You've no one else to turn to. Everything now that burdens you. We all have it. So it's it's that which stops you, that worries you. And remember the reason you're here this morning. Because I, I need someone who will who will restore me, who will save me from all of this. Because I am crying, I am suffering. I am burdened by the world, by the flesh and the devil. I'm being attacked in my body and my mind. The reason we are in prayer is to allow Jesus. This is the reason we we cling to his word so that we may open that door. That we may see the way to go. To allow Jesus just to change all the situations in our lives, in us, everything where you find there is a problem. In your life, in your family, in your work, in you. Bring everything with you now. And really try to leave that. the door.
just showing Jesus everything, everything you want to be changed. Just bring it before him. Here it is, Lord. Here is my sin. And admit it. Feel your guilt and shame. It's it's yours. So give a show to the Lord everything. Let's not try to justify ourselves. I am a sinner. I am weak. I've hurt others and myself by my sin. Impurities. My jealousies. judgments every negative word Try to understand that um, Jesus is calling you. He's, you hear his voice, come to me, come out of your pain. Come to the one who loves you and forgives you, who is, who is love and mercy. Come to the fountain. Come and drink without any cost. Just tell him what's bothering you. Tell him, Jesus, this is pressure I'm under. I'm, I'm physically unwell. I'm tired. I've lost. I've lost my zeal. I don't feel up to anything anymore. There's something especially burdening in you. We have to stop and make room because if we don't hand it over, we will carry it. That's as simple as that. If I have unforgiveness and bitterness, if I'm angry with my family relations, I am imprisoned in myself. I need someone to free me, someone to open that prison cell and give me back my freedom. Cast your burdens onto Jesus. He cares for you. He's like a sponge. The sponge is just like it soaks up everything. So Jesus is like a love sponge. Love absorbs everything that is wrong with us. It 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 it, it takes it out of us. So it's like we're just pressing ourselves up against Jesus and it hurts him. You know, we wound Jesus. That's what crucifixion is. I kiss his feet, but their feet are nailed to a tree. And I put that wound on him. I offended him by rejecting his love. And yet he wants me to come to him. This is why he suffered so that I might live. I need to accept this. I need to surrender and absorb this 
this truth of love for me. So as you press yourself up against the Lord, just experience him soaking up everything that is evil in you. That's his precious blood soaking everything in, taking everything from you, every worry, every sin and guilt, shame, anxiety. How much, how jealous our God is for us, how he pursues us. My child, do not be afraid. Come to the waters and drink. Be filled with all I have to offer you. I may restore you. I am here with you. It is I who have come to you. You're not alone and I want to help you, says the Lord. I want to take you out of the world and lift you up into my arms. So I, oh, I can't stop telling you to come to me. Everything you want to be changed. I will multiply it and turn it to good. You have a habit of complaining. Some of us have just love to kind of see the negative of we're afraid of or just trepid. Afraid to open our mouths. I think we're going to be attacked. It's, it's, it's a lack of faith. Lack of expectancy. It is a that is a sin. That is. It is a, a weakness. Not completely, ever is the root of that has to be surrendered. We all lack that confidence. All afraid to go outside, afraid to interact with people. Because we don't know who we are, don't have that security, have that freedom. So give that sin to Jesus. Unburden yourself now. Lord, you know my weakness, you know how bad it is for me, how difficult, how I suffer my fears forgive me for complaining about myself and for feeling sorry for myself and and feeling sorry for other people being absorbed with other my children especially worrying about them and complaining it's all a lack of faith. It's who are you? Who are you? Are you God or are you a child of God? Oh, Jesus, forgive me for being so critical, so judgmental and so negative in my attitude to life, to the to 
my family. Forgive my lack of faith. I just, some of us just complain. We get, and we, it's so subtle. And that's Satan, he catches us out. We, we enjoy that murmur or complaining, a little bit of a pity party. I deserve to feel sorry for myself. Maybe you do, but it'll kill you. It will destroy you. And you will slide into despair. And you will complain and you will think God doesn't care. That you have surrendered your freedom to a lie. It's So who are you this morning? Who are you now? It's always the people who are closest to us that are hurting us the most because we we can be so demanding of love from them. We we see them as God and we we expect them to do what we say and ask our children, our spouses, our brothers and sisters, our parents. If I don't get my way, if I'm not listened to today, if they're not up to scratch, or maybe the people at work, like, who do I think I am to judge the world and its people? And yes, they hurt me. I'm being hurt all the time. I find it hard to accept certain people, especially my, our superiors at work. We, we, we step back from them, we're afraid of them. We don't want to meet people, we don't want to. Friends, let us recognize this these people we have to give all of them give all of that to jesus or just tell jesus look jesus i'm sorry i just so find it so hard to face that person today my husband i have to go down now and face him and my, i have to face that i have to go to work i have to face them i have to face this just find it so I can't forgive that person. It just hurt me terribly. That pain is still so present in me. Because they don't trust in me and I don't trust in them. And we're both hurting and we're living together. What a wretched man I am. Who will save me from this plight? Friends, the good news is that there is freedom from every hurt and anger and bitterness. I decide to forgive. Many times, Jesus, maybe seven is enough now. I'm getting tired of this. Not seven times, 77 times seven. You cannot enter into me unless you forgive 
cannot love me and hate your brother. If you want my forgiveness, you must forgive. So let's find that person. What's, who is the person you can't accept? You really oppose all the time. You're constantly maybe talking negatively about them. And you, you, you enjoy when others join in that converse. It's as if it justifies your, your negative speaking of them. You have a right to do it. You, you judge and th then we really find it hard to talk to them. We see them then, we meet them and in our spirit we know we are, we're so guilt ridden then. We're hardly able to look them in the eyes because we've destroyed their dignity and they are suffering. Even though they heard nothing, they know there's something wrong. choose to be silent we, we 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 won't forgive or ask forgiveness Jesus you know that's the problem you know that's my the nail in my coffin that is keeping me in the tomb. It's what's killing me. I'm sorry for judging. I'm sorry for offending. Please forgive me. Forgive me for, for not loving you as God loves you. Forgive me for not seeing your, your, your worth, your dignity. For not respecting you. You, who am I to judge you? Who am I to condemn you? Are you too not suffering as I am suffering? Today I decide to love you, to accept you in your weaknesses and your failings and your inabilities. I thank God for you. I ask God's blessing upon you. It is good that you exist, that you are in my life, that you are my, my spouse, my, my child. And I won't worry about you anymore. I will stop thinking about you because you've you you don't belong to me. You belong to to God, and it's it's between you and Him now. I've handed you over to Him. I've I'm giving you to Jesus completely, and I'm free of you. I'm free. I'm. Thank you, Lord, for
that you always pick me up, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That you are my friend who supports me. Thank you, Jesus, for we can be partners again today. And maybe it was you, Lord, who let me fall in the first place. Let this happen so that I would learn that you are with me and I need you, Jesus. I need like a mother need like a child needs its mother. Maybe you let that child fall just so that I would learn by my mistakes. But I will not despair. I will come back to you. And I, I don't believe you would allow me to suffer more than I am able for. Because you only love me. And are constant in your affection for me, Lord. Though a mother may forget her baby or the child in her womb, I will never forget you. I am jealous for you, my beloved. You will never let us, Jesus, see that you will bring us to life. Because you are my saviour. When I fall, you, you hold me. Pick me up lovingly and just graciously and very quickly raise me up again and dust me off. That brings me great joy and strength and hope to keep going. This path to you, Lord, path to your love. You're like a, Jesus, you're like a nurse, a kind nurse who there's no other care but my welfare, my, my needs. You only want the best for me. And it, it's your responsibility to save me, not mine. I can do nothing of myself. I, am, I have wounded myself. I am broke. I'm a broken man, but you will restore me. I will be glorified in you, Lord, by your love. And you want me to know this. Let us, for the last moment, just stop before this truth and feel utterly at home in Jesus. You know, he's, he's in us. I will receive him again this morning at Mass. He is this he lives in us forever. No longer I who live. I want to hold this and observe this truth now that no longer I who live, but Christ is living in me.